first thing we have to do is learn how to step in. I call it presenter shoes. Now, this is a very simple acting technique. And I'm going to talk, it's really interesting because every Friday I go live when it's term time, every Friday. And every Friday I say, now this is a really bad thing to admit, but every Thursday, I always Friday, I always say to myself, today is the day that I'm going to spend the time to get myself ready. And I'm not going to do any work beforehand. I'm going to prepare. Now, my preparation takes half an hour. Now, my preparation is actually based off being an actor going on stage. And I have tried to do 45 minutes and I have tried to do anything else, but it's half an hour. And the reason for it is you have the 35 minute call. So if you start preparing too early, so when you're when you're going on stage, I'll just explain about the 35 minute call. The 35 minute call is where an actor prepares before they go on stage. We go and arrive at the theatre. We have to sign in. We have to do our makeup. We have to style ourselves. We have to get into our costume. And then 35 minutes later, it's called the half hour call. So 30 minutes later, you're called beginners to the stage. And then you're in the wings getting yourself ready. Now, those last five minutes are really important. But that 30 minute before those last five minutes is where you prepare. And a lot of people over prepare. Now, if you remember, I know you quite well. I didn't send you the questions that we were potentially going to discuss until this morning. There is a moment of knowing your script, like, you know, knowing what you're going to say. And one on that one, I'm going to say, you know you, you do you, and you do you better than anybody else. And nobody knows what you're going to say anyway. So stop trying to learn a script. The minute you start to learn a script is the minute you're going to start tripping yourselves up. You haven't spent years like me being an actor training on how to learn a script. So why now are you going to start putting pressure on yourself? to learn a script. So the first thing we do is we take the script and we visually, we, we rip it up, okay? So we absolutely think about ripping the script up and throwing it in the bin. We no longer need it. We don't need that crutch because what we're gonna do is we're going to take pictures and we're gonna visualize pictures. So if you think if you're doing a PowerPoint, you put a picture that is relevant to what you're talking about. We don't overload our PowerPoint with lots of text. We put a picture in. The picture is the clue. We think in pictures because actually we remember everything that happens to us as pictures. So when we're walking down the street, now it's much harder if you are blind. And we, I do have techniques for people who are visually challenged. There are lots of different things, whether it's auditory. We have got lots of different ways of doing it. So please, at the moment, I'm only talking about people who, who are not visually impaired. But for the non-visually impaired, even actually for people who are visually impaired, actually, it's about remembering the picture, painting a picture. So you take a picture that you see and it's your visual clue and you place those either in your PowerPoint or in your mind like a structure that you follow. And if you follow them as a picture, what's beautiful is you haven't put them in an order. So if you don't put them in an order, you've not got pressure to follow a script. So again, we get rid of that. So what we're doing now is we're creating up and freeing up that, that process of presenting. And so the whole idea is that we see it as a myriad of pictures, like a collage. And we know that we want to touch these points, but we're not going to put pressure on ourselves of which order we're going to put them in. Because if we miss one out, we can always go, oh, I forgot to mention. The other thing that we don't do is we don't worry about umming and ahhing. We don't worry about stumbling over our words. I started the podcast and I stumbled. Did I go, oh, no, I go, ah, I own that. I made a mistake. It doesn't matter. That's the human element. So instead of putting all this pressure on ourselves, we actually lift the pressure. But all of this starts with breathing. And in the last five minutes before you go on stage, <laughs> what did I say to you in the, in the studio? I said, lift yourself up. Create space for your breathing, your belly breath. Your voice cannot come out if you're not breathing properly. If you don't have, and I've done a whole video on this on YouTube, you can go and check it. If you are not using your breath to support your voice, your voice will not work. Your voice will get tighter and tighter and tighter. If you're a woman, your voice will go higher. If you're a man, your voice will get deeper, but ultimately you will get dry. So we look at our breathing. We look at how we're standing. We lock our legs and we lock our legs and we're leaning forward or we're leaning back. We're then leaning into the audience. So there's lots of different things that we can do, but actually we have to relax our legs. We need to keep our hips, then forget the power pose. We need to keep our 
feet on terra firma. We need to keep them rooted. We need to keep our knees relaxed. We need to keep our feet under our hips. It's really simple. And when it comes to moving, and a lot of people ask me about movement, you move on a thought. So as you're thinking your next thought, that's when you move. Because actually the thought moves, the make creates the movement. Otherwise, you're just moving and moving and moving. You end up pacing. So you move on a thought. So the next time you want to move to something, you then talk and you don't worry about gestures. I could go on for hours. This is what I talk about. This is what I do. And every single person wrapping it all up is unique. And every single person who comes to work with me, I make sure I keep that uniqueness. One of the really things I, I don't want is to create a public speaker or a presenter on camera who is a uh, mirror of me, because that's not real. You are you, you do you, and you do you better than anybody else.